Adi. Hey. Uh, we are channeling. Jim is channeling uh, extraterrestrials and higher beings. And that's all I need to say. Lakesh is from Pleiades. He, he's called the blue, the short blue, the kind of Pleiadians which are short blues. And uh, the Kerr is uh, a tall Liron, and that's what, what we usually have as uh, typical visitors. And others, uh, you'll ask them to introduce themselves. Correct. So we're talking now to Jaguar. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Yeah. We're oh, talking hold now. Hold on, we have more visitors. To Jaguar. Jaguar, so uh, hello in Liron is Wuha. Uh, how about welcome? Can you say yes. welcome? Can you say welcome? Um, yeah, uh, just a second. Eishihu um, Utunwa. Eishihu. Who was that? It's Christy. She's parked in the driveway and she got hollered at, so she's being told to move her car. Oh, right. Wrong driveway. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, can you repeat again? Eishihu. Eishihu Utunwa. Um, uh, but also, Max, I, I would like, um, before taking any further uh, translations, to check uh -huh. with the Kerr about uh, the appropriateness of that action, because I got this feeling uh -huh. and, um, th that uh, we should proceed with care and include her opinion before, um, before taking further uh, translation efforts. Uh, I hope you, you understand that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, out of respect. Be careful, but that's okay. I think uh, there is too much bureaucracy there. Everybody in the universe knows that language, except you know, it's except us here. Hi. Hey, welcome. Uh, hi, Christy. How are you? Have a seat and join us. Um, actually, yeah, Takur did say something to me about that, but I'll, we'll ask her. Oh, that's correct. Uh, so yeah. let, let me repeat. A ishu hu utu unwa. A ishu hu utu unwa. A ishu hu utu unwa. You were yes. right. You just didn't pronounce it right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not totally sure. Um, oh, that that, that would be my instinct. A ishu hu utu unwa. Is it too warm in here for you? It's okay. Okay, it's okay. It's warm for me. It's warm for you. Let me turn yeah. it down. I was thinking it's a little warm, personally. Straight up the stairs. Okay. Okay. So we have here Sandy and Chris. Christy. Christy. Hi, everybody. All right. And we're adjusting the temperature to make it more temperate. <laughs> For Max. All right. Uh, that, that's about it. We don't have any more announcements. If there is more than 10 people, but it's not today, if there is more than 10 people, the tenth one, you know, if you've finished with your question, you can exit and just watch us. But right, there's a lot of people that just watch. Yeah, if you, if there is less than ten, then you don't have to leave. We we like the company, and we right. would, you know, it's nice to see boxes there. Of music. Yeah, the the people that are here in the boxes can talk and ask questions. Right. The people that are just listening just want to listen. That's all. Uh huh. So. Are we starting? I guess we will. Or we wait for Christy to come. Um, it's up to you. She'll pass behind there anyway. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. Bye, Jim. See you soon, Jim.
Ooha. Ooha. Oh, I am to curd. Hey, Tucker, welcome. <clears throat> Blessings. Blessings. <clears throat> One moment. There has been questions about the Lyran language I heard earlier while you were speaking. Yes. The words that he has been saying have actually been some phrases as well. Because, for example, welcome is not one word in our language. Uh -huh. It is, we greet you with love. So he spoke many words for the word welcome, and this is correct. Uh -huh. Yes, it's more than one word, you understand. It is okay for you to interpret, but let us not do that today. All right. I would like to have you ask other questions. There are those that listen to these sessions that have not positive intentions, and therefore languages can sometimes come under fire because they can be interpreted and if they can interpret those languages then they may be able to interpret things that they should not. Does this make sense to you? Yes. But yet they are encrypted in our language however your government is very clever. They have aliens helping them, so it is possible for them to be able to find a way to unencrypt some of our communications. So therefore we are very hesitant to bring too much of the language interpreted to these sessions. However, at this time, they have not been harmful. But you understood that, did you not? Yes. But these things, fortunate not coming to those of negative vibrations, they are actually not ending how the words are put together by other outer species, although even some of them are close to the syntax of earthlings in some ways, but others are far from it very removed, as in reptilian or insectoid. Do you understand? Those languages sometimes do not even use know what they mean to be interpreted as greetings or formalities of some sort. They are just merely sounds that are greetings to each other in their own languages. Sounds that mean words, but yet. Do you understand what I mean? I am not sure that I am communicating that correctly. I think that the fact that you speak, you and others are speaking languages yeah. on the YouTube, it is helping light workers tremendously. Yes, but we will not interpret it all. There are some things that, some words that we will not interpret. That's fine. Yes. This is all I am saying. Not all words will be interpreted. I would invite you and Jaguar to speak more of Lyran language, whatever is appropriate. I will give him a blessing Thank in you. Lyran. Thank you. Because he will perhaps understand it, but there are times when he does not understand what he is saying as well. Is that true? Yes. Yes, yeah. Tucker. Hello. Yes. You sometimes are able to interpret, and other times not. There is a reason for that. But let me give you a blessing, since Max is interested in the, the language form. Yes. 
아영도 호신도바하 이런데 코로호마홈예 샴부 코로하타 존하 하라홈부터 지시투람 봐라 두하 호이아임 보라 카 워쇼 호라론도 모쇼하 이요 오호 옥두누 오이시 오호 과인이오 오호 모아 무카 오호 로손도 모아 모아 여호다 아 there is Is that thunder? Yeah, it's a spring thunderstorm. Very welcome event. Yes, we have such things on our world. But it's been a while since I have heard one, since I've been on the ship for a few years, your time now. For us, it signifies that spring is coming, or spring has come. It is a familiar and welcome sound. Would it interpret what you just said, or at least overview? I will give you, I do not remember exactly what I said, but it was on the lines of giving David a blessing for using his language and respecting it in a way that is very familiar to me. We understand that you were given the language because you do have much respect for it. And you do have much respect for alien life, and for the fact that they can help you as well. But the blessing was more for you personally, and thanking you for your responsibility in this matter. Yes, Tucker. Uh, thank you for acknowledging that, and uh, uh, something I was already trying to communicate. I don't know if you got that message telepathically, but I wanted to. Uh, um, personally apologize for any breach of protocol that I did with earlier translations. I wasn't aware uh, that I was not not being correct, so I apologize for any inconvenience I brought with my actions. You were not at fault. You were not given any knowledge of what to do or what not to do. The protocol was not broken. The words that were interpreted were not important. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, that brings me peace of consciousness. And realize also that when you're saying some of these words, they're actually phrases. Mm -hmm. That because there's not one word in your language to cover what we would say in its place. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Tucker, may I m make some questions? Of course. Uh, it seems yesterday, uh, uh, in my, my time zone, so t uh, the night before this one, yesterday evening, I saw a ship uh, and it seemed to, to I tried to uh, acknowledge its presence telepathically and send them love in their mission and it seemed to acknowledge my 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 presence. Could you check who oh, they were? There is no need to check. Mm -hmm. I am already aware that whenever a light worker sees a, a ship, it is mm -hmm. more likely intentional than not. And mm -hmm. for it to respond is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. Jim has had several of these kinds of experiences. There are several ships that make themselves known in this particular area. Mm -hmm. And when he's with a certain one of his friends, they see these ships and are... Well, Jim is delighted. And the other individual is slightly fearful, but <laughs> not, not that they don't like aliens. It's just a, a fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But they said, if you're going to abduct somebody, take Jim, not me. <laughs> we find that amusing as well. <laughs> yes, yes, very interesting. Um, another question. Are you aware of a person that calls himself uh, Ryan, R-I-O-N, the Ruan? Ruan. And he's, yeah, he's part of Team Light. Are you aware of, of him? And his work? I am not aware of all those that channel. Mm. But I am becoming more aware through Lakesh. Mm -hmm. Lakesh is more aware of all the channelers than I am because I have other work that I must do. I am yes. aware of the channelers that are I work with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are a few others that I am aware of as well that are Similar. Yes, he. I asked uh, specifically about him because he speaks uh, Lyran also. Ah, Wuha, from Wukwa. Yeah. Wukuno, Iso, Ohoto, Ushunu, Oto, Oho. Koka, Ohustu. Io, Ohono, Otuno, Iso, Ohoa. Ha. Hmm. I understand. Um, related to that, I have a request. So far, we haven't ever had on YouTube publicly anybody speaking who speaks through other channelers. It's always one channeler, a group of people, another channeler, another group of people. We would invite through you, we would invite uh, higher beings, extraterrestrials, to speak through Jim, who, those who already appeared on YouTube before. Bashar came once through Jim, but it wasn't on record, so that doesn't count. It would be nice to have those to come on uh, and to speak through Jim uh, on publicly. This will happen eventually. Thank you. There are those that are aware of these channeling sessions that would like to become a part of that. Wonderful. We would welcome them. Some of these channelers are already interested. May I ask a question? Yes. Hi. Hello. Who am um, I speaking with? This is Sabrina. Ah, uh, yes, I remember you. Um, I have a question in terms of discernment. Yes. And all the different channels. And um, how do we know... I, I don't want to say who's telling the truth, but how do we know? <sighs> I understand where you are going, and let me tell you this. You will know when someone is not authentic, because it will resonate with you as you watch. It will come as an uneasy feeling. It will come as, an, as a question mark sometimes. It will come as... Something not natural. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Is there another part to that question? No, it's just it's, it, sometimes even when I know, you know, like you said, because I can feel it vibrationally that it just doesn't resonate. Yes. But then sometimes I even doubt that. So... Um, and then sometimes even from the same person, some information seems to resonate and some information doesn't seem to. Yes, well, you are human. What I would do is this. When you are alone doing your meditations, find your highest resonation, the things within you that make you the happiest, that brings the most light, into your body and then when you speak about these things ask them to bring you the truth 
Does that make sense to you? Yes. And then when they bring this truth to you, do not doubt it. Do not doubt it. Because this is the resonation for you. There may be people that you are listening to that are not for you. It may not be that they are incorrect, but they are not for you. They're not communicating at your level. They are not communicating the things that you need to hear. Does this make sense to you? Yes. Yes. And sometimes when you do not resonate with these people, you may resonate with them later. But at this time, there are things that they are saying that do not resonate as truth because you are at a level that believes this or that and have not come into a purity of what is actual. Or it could be that they are not speaking the truth and you know better. Okay. All right. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you. And follow your highest instincts and your highest resonations within you because they will tell you the truth. It is much time like whenever you are in a situation and you, you get a feeling that it's not right. Have you ever had that happen? Yes. And you know that it's not right, so what do you do? Do you continue there or do you move away? You must move away. But sometimes people still continue. That is true. But if you are wise, you move toward your greatest resignation, your highest intentions, and the greater good for everyone. Yeah. Cause, okay, go ahead. Because, you know, uh, what I, I guess... I don't know if you tell me if maybe I'm going about this the wrong way. I try and listen to different people because I want to get different points of view and yes, try to get a more complete view and not be so one-sided. Yes. Do you find that some over-intellectualize things and make it seem like it is greater than it is? Or what is it that you find bothering you? It, 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 it sometimes gets a bit confusing because everybody, some things match, but a lot of times like the stories are so different. Yes. Um... As an example, like let's say the 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 story, the the history of the Earth, yes, and different channelers seem to have different histories on what went on. Um, this, you must understand if you go to another country in your world, their history of the United States or their history of another country will be different than that country's history. This happens with aliens as well. They see it from their point of view, what they have seen, what they have experienced, and what their science says to them, and some of it is inaccurate. But the universe cannot be known completely and truly yet by anyone and so for this many stories come from legend from some species because they haven't been here for thousands of years and others come from being here and living through it but sometimes just like your Old Testament things are written down and changed and it's not quite accurate do you understand yes yeah, so 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 a lot of it, it's a matter of perspective. What the beginning of the world is actually not that important. And so many take light of it and change it. What is important is where you're going in the world. What is important is where the enlightenment is going. They might want to distract you with all these different beginning facts and Things that matter, not at all to what is happening on your earth. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. No, I was just using that as an example. But yes, I understand. I yeah. understand. 
But there is some things that are just a distraction and not really worth listening to. Because is it really valid how the world started if, in the end, we are going to ascend, you are going to ascend, everyone is ascending at their own rates. Does that make sense? Yes. This is the important thing that we must understand at this point of history is that the ascension is more important, the spirit, the truth about ourselves and where we are and who we are and who you are and where you are for every species. This is the most important thing for right now. Of course, history is a fun, dabbling can be very interesting, but at this time, there may be five different versions of your creation. There's a biblical version, there's a scientific version, there's a reptilian version, there's a there's even a Lyran version because we discovered you long ago and the history that we know about you is what we experienced with you and that would be different than anybody else. Thank you. Uh, can I give you an example? Yes, please. Uh, a friend posted a video on our site. I watched only the beginning of it, but the beginning was that the aliens are certainly secretive. Uh, there was a history of alien abduction program, and the conclusion was made that the aliens have secret agenda of possibly taking over the and I tried to, and people became alarmed with that, and I, and especially it kind of they connected the old hybridization program with the new one which I proposed, the volu voluntary one, and they became afraid that we are being deceived. And I don't have anything to oppose to that. I don't have any proofs, and what I can say is it's a leap of faith. If you look for bad aliens, you will find bad aliens. If you look for good aliens, you'll find good ones. So it's your again. It's your choice. Can you comment on that? Are you talking to me? Yes, to everybody. But uh, your comment, I invite. There is truth in that. You cannot prove many points because many points are speculations that could be true. But what I would say is what I was telling Sabrina. The resignation, the truth will not be hidden, and a lie will not be hidden as well. So that is all I can really say about that, is that if you know what you feel, believe that you have some intuitive natures within you that I will. Yes? yes. Uh, are you speaking to me? I think it's just random noise who went through. Uh, I will mute it. I have a general question regarding unity consciousness. Yes. You know, how us be, we're all one. Yes. Does that include, like, rocks and blades of grass and trees, or is it just it, something it, it, consciousness? It includes everything but the consciousness is because everything has its own vibration. You split an atom and and how well with the higher consciousness there is a difference. You can actually change the world with your consciousness, but you can change each other by lifting each other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, you, the consciousness that is more aware. Be aware of you as a human, but may be aware of you 
as an entity outside its realm. Does that make sense to you? So a stone would be aware. It would be aware in some senses, but not in the sense of consciousness. Uh -huh. It has a job to do, and it its job. But it does not have the ability to change its job. It does not have the ability to change what it is to do. Okay. Or how it is to affect everything around it. Or how it fits into the scenery. It is what it is. Whereas a human consciousness has the ability to change, develop, evolve, devolve. Does that make sense to you? We could, being as powerful human creators we are, we could project some con consciousness into a stone or you, into a fish. Or you can in some ways, okay. but a fish will still be a fish and still do the things that fishes do. It may be more conscious of who you are, but it is still a fish and will not be able to evolve or do anything extra that fishes can do. Whereas you as human beings can do things that are not necessarily of your vibration, if that makes sense. You can move beyond who you are and become greater than you are and change the things within you and without you. Does this make sense to you? I think if you m make a dog into a... A friend, it becomes more human than a dog. Yes. But it will not get a job and pay your bills. Ah. <laughs> One thing I'm confused about is when you read. Uh, I do past life regressions, yeah. and I've had some people come in, like, be a. Be a yes. Or a dog, or yes. a bird. Or a butterfly. Just a piece of that consciousness come through. Actually, evolve from a butterfly. Thing. That is a good question because there is part of that that is self-conscious. They were aware that they butterfly in one life. It was a short life. Okay. But they were only a what they did as a butterfly could only be done. Their consciousness was their brief, but it it is a very short life. Okay, that completes and sees another everything yes. he says as consciousness, human consciousness, and it doesn't start out as a like a lower form, then, they're totally separate. Then how can people relate to that? Relate to what? To what? When they have a life, how can they relate that they were once in this frame? How can they once relate to this and not have had it happen? Right, that's why I'm confused. Because, let me explain. If it can be do you understand? Mm -hmm. People have created parts just to believe it was wrong. This makes sense to you. So the past there. Their consciousness was there. It cannot be denied that it was there. But yet, it was only there a very short time. And perhaps, instead of being a past life, it was a past experience. Can you actually call the life of Eva an entire life a hundredth of a second? But, but so, I, I was told by an Akashic reader of a way in like a yes. hundred million years ago for like a hundred years, hundred fifty yes. years. So I projected my consciousness into that for a very long time. This may have taught you a lesson that you needed to know. Past lives are they're alien and they're animal. I 
and you must understand. The reason for that is to give you understanding and learning so that when you become the, the higher spirit as you evolve and be spirit someday, you'll be able to relate to these things. It won't be that they are strangers to you. Does this make sense to you? You need to know these things if you are going to be a being of responsibility. You know, have to know how they feel, how they had once felt, how they had once experienced. How are you going to be fair to them unless you know what they went through and how they felt? Thank you. Does this make sense to you? Yes, it does. And I'm I to cut in, but you guys are cutting off, kind of. Like, your voice keeps going in and out. I don't know if that's just me, though. Perhaps technology, or perhaps this thunderstorm Could be. is affecting it. How bad is it? I don't know. It got really bad at yeah. one point, and I just. Right now, how bad is it now? It's okay now. Okay. Uh, Taco. Yes. Yeah, my name is Gabriel. I wonder about. I saw a person on Skype having a spoon, and he can bend spoon with his mind and turn things on fire, like. Sometimes when he goes to school, he can't go to school because he sets things on fire. Mischievous. Yes, there are people that can do these things. It is a channel within their brain that has extraordinary power. However, some of it is trickery. But some of it is actuality. Yeah, that, that, that part. Soon yeah. the mind uh, is actually molecular. Mo what is it? Manipulation. Manipula is that correct, Max? Yeah. Molecular manipulation. Manipulation, yes. yes. That is <clears throat> what bending the spoon. However, starting fires is partially spiritual in nature. Do you understand that? Yes. And if someone can start a fire with their will, there is something that needs to be corrected. Because that is not something man is to do. Yeah, he says that he, he has connection with extraterrestrial race. I don't remember what race he has. One and he, uh, he's a twin person, so he's, they are teaching each other and connecting. Yeah. I don't know. We, what is... Moha <laughs> Um, there is, yeah, uh, Yes, there is one moment. There is a reptilian race that does do this. It is a form of trickery, trickery, but it is human manipulation as well. I cannot explain it to you right now, but it is not healthy. Would you like to invite more questions? It's not uh, re really a person I have sp spoken to. I, I have never met him. 
I understand. I will have to... Do you know the name of this person? I, I don't think I should say it right out in the... to everybody here. That's fine. I will talk to you later. Do you, you have talk? anything to say, say more to me? Not at this time. Okay. May I ask a question? Yes. Hello, Takir. Good evening, Sabrina. Is... No, Safira. Thank you, yes, Safira. Hello. I have a question about my son, Benedetto. Benedetto. He applied in October, and he's 22, lives a good moral life, thinks, has a world view, um, has a lot of spiritual abilities, but he's never heard anything, no no scanning, no nothing. Did, did something, did, can you, I don't know what to ask, but is there a reason why he was just skipped over? Is there something about him that didn't work? Or? I do not know. I am not part of that committee. However, I will check for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I will tell you at another time. They are not in session. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Uh, you told me the, one of another channeling time yeah. that that um, the gar the original Garden of Eden was on Lyra. That was one. Yes, that was the original Garden of Eden, and it was repeated on Earth in a very similar way, but not exactly. Oh, but so. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to care. That's okay. I am not understanding why you are sorry. Because I interrupted you. <laughs> oh, no, no. I apologize. You are so sorry. there was a diff. Thank you. So there was a different Garden of Eden on Earth as on Eden uh, on Lyra. Yes. Okay. Now I understand. So do you understand who Adam and Eve were uh, on Earth? Yes. Can you share that? They were the first thinking individuals, meaning that they were the first of their kind to have knowledge. Okay, and their children. Means, yes. Their children married uh, when they were older, other people. So the people who were on the earth before they were, were their people? Yes. And they were. Were, let me explain what I mean by knowledge. They had knowledge of spirituality that no one else had. The others were all dark, mystic spirits that they worshipped and believed in. And few believed in great, wonderful spirits that were good. They all feared all their gods back then before Adam and Eve. But then when God was there with Adam and Eve, even though the story says that they were brought to failure by a serpent, they were still the first spiritually pure individuals before the fall. Does this make sense to you? The others that lived around them were not spiritually pure, but Adam and Eve were because of their innocence, naivety, and they listened to the voice of their own hearts and resignations because they knew what was right and what was wrong. Even before right and wrong was made clear to them, they were living right. Does that make sense to you? Yes, I was taught that the fall happened because Lucifer seduced Eve because mm. he wanted to be one with her, and she realized he was not meant to be her partner, so she went to Adam, and she, had, uh, she united sexually with Adam, and they inherited shame and guilt as a result of that false union uh, that Lucifer wanted to kind of steal her away. And you... Do you understand the story in that way or in a different way? 
in a different way, actually. Okay. Um, it, the purity of Adam and Eve's sexuality was far before they ever met the serpent. They were pure sexual entities together because they had no bad intention for their sexuality. They had no bad thoughts about it. It was pure. It was innocent. It was loving. It was gentle. What happened with the serpent or the being that beguiled Eve was that she, she began to understand that it may not be what she thought it was. He gave her the thoughts that the, her intentions were bad. Although she was not being bad, he convinced her she was bad. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yes. So, the, the And therefore, when she thought that she was bad, although she was not, she was deceived. And this is where things fall apart. When people think that they're doing evil things which are actually pure and loving and everyone around them believes that they're not doing the right thing because they're told and they believe that things are meant they're not doing it for the right reasons or the reasons they're doing them are evil. You must look at yourself and look at God and see the purity there purity there is no purity in deception okay so there was no sexual union between um, Lucifer and Eve not that I am aware of okay well okay <laughs> not that so I am aware of because who would want to unite themselves with what would appear to be something other than yourself she was not attracted. She was attracted to his words. She listened to his words because they started to make sense to her. It so the, shows, so and the when she started to understand that he was telling her that she was doing wrong and that everybody else on the planet believed the same way as he did. Mm -hmm. bought into that deception, not into his physical being, but into his words, into his thought process. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yes, except the world fell into darkness or Adam and Eve were separated from the garden just because of that. It seems too simple. They were not separated because they had children after that. No, from the Garden of Eden, from God. They were separated from the Garden of Eden because they left it. That was their choice. It was their choice to believe the serpent. And after they believed the serpent, it was no longer Eden. Mm -hmm. It was something totally different to them. It was another concept that he had given them about what they, have, what they were doing. Mm -hmm. He just changed the entire concept of Eve, Eden. Mm -hmm. He didn't change it. They didn't run away from it. It was just gone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you, you have a similar story on your planet with your garden? Yes, except that, well, it's a longer story. Do you want me to tell it now? Oh, that would be great. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, there was a similar situation where, I will shorten the story if you don't mind. Thank you. There, it can go on for a very, a very long and intricate period of time. Creation was very different than seven days as, as is written in your Bible, but the Adam and Eve aspect were very similar. They had put... Uh, but the, the difference is that they put the whole civilization into an Adam and Eve sort of concept. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reptilians were jealous because why should one species be held over another given 
that they were pure and innocent and watched after and needed nothing. Mm -hmm. And so eventually what happened is their Eve, Adam and Eve, were destroyed by the fact that an outside force came to destroy it, which is the same as the serpent, the outside force, actually. Mm -hmm. This is the same similarity. However, they did not reason with these people, but decided that they would take over these people. And they deceived them into believing they were good, just like many people think that the aliens will deceive them and then do bad to them. However, in this case, that is what happened. And then eventually the planet was destroyed. And the Lyran people were scattered, but accepted in many, many places around the universe. That is a very, very shortened version. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Earth was, um, some of the Lyrans came to Earth when the planet was destroyed, is that right? Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. some of the races would be from your race here? Yes. Oh, which ones? One moment. There are many stories about which races were begun by the Lyrans. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. There's many legends, and there's many different, as you, someone had pointed out earlier, there was different beginnings, and when they came to Earth, there was different beginnings because they didn't come all to one place. Mm -hmm. But they came to different places and had different situations and histories. So therefore, the beginnings were in, I will tell you just the locations, is that okay? Please, thank you. One of them was in the United States in the southern part called Georgia and Florida. Mm -hmm. There was a beginning there. There was also a beginning in a place called Czechoslovakia, where mm -hmm. it is now the Czech whatever. I'm not sure what it is. Czechia and Slovakia. Czechia and Slovakia. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. In that area, there were some settlements as well. And one other area and that was in what you would call the Shetland Islands. Mm -hmm. The top, where there still are, is much alien activity. Archaeologists oh, okay. see, uh, find huge skeletons. Would, it, would some of those be Lyrans? Yes. Some of them would. There is still much, if you would go to the Shetland Islands, do you know where those are? Nope. Yep. Okay. They're north of England, I believe. Okay. They're a very sparsely populated area of the world, closer to the Arctic Circle than they actually are to, well, they are close to Norway as well, Scandinavia, I believe. But there are several islands there that are uninhabited almost completely, and there is much alien activity there because oh. they are not detected. Well, and the weather is not as harsh there as some may think. Which of the aliens would be there? Good ones? Yes, there are good and there are bad. Oh. There are. One is island is Muckle Fluggin or something of that. Gabriel, is there an island called Muckle Fluggy? Where? In the Shetland Islands. I don't know. And Ilya and Egg. These are places that there are alien settlements. Mm hmm. Um, Takir, do you know who built the um, the Stonehenge monument in England? It's supposed to be built perhaps by ETs. 
you will find out one day who built them. <laughs> For me to tell you history that you do not know would be unproductive for me. Okay. Thank you, Tiku. I must um, go now. Thank you for your visit. Thank you, Tiku. Yes. Muha Whiskia. Ishro Otonua Ekoto. Blessings to all of you. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Hi, Jim. Can you give me my water? <laughs> Thank you. Did you want anything to drink? Okay. Welcome back, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hey. Hi, Jim. Hello, how are you all? Good, thank you. Pretty good. Good. Oh, Takur was long winded today. <laughs> we had lots of questions. Oh, how was she? Good. Good, good. I have a sense that there was somebody else coming, but they're not there now. But Takur took up their time as well. <laughs> Something. Is there any questions for me right now? How are you feeling? Well, it's been a long day, <laughs> but I feel fine. Okay, that's I good. Feel fine. Okay. Uh, it's been a long day. I, I had a cup of coffee before this session, so that would wake me back up a little bit. <laughs> because how, is, how is the sound now? Is it still breaking or is it fixed now? No, it's good. It's, it's good been now good for a long time. What was that? It's, good. it's been a good uh, long time now. Oh, good. No, That's maybe for... Way. I would assume it would be thunderstorm. Kind of just breaking the connection. No, oh, yeah, yeah. For a while there, we didn't really. I I didn't really hear a lot of what Takur said. Oh, for a while. Um, yeah, yeah. What's the subject matter? Do you remember? Um, when she was asking about what she does and um and about the um. The past life regressions and oh, okay. unity consciousness was one. Oh, you were talking about passion. all the. Um, I forget what you were talking. About. <laughs> um, you were talking about uh, conscious, the un unity consciousness, consciousness and what's included in that. If it would be rocks and grass uh, <clears throat> and trees, or is it what just the, human? What did Takur say? So you can give it to them. <laughs> Sorry, I don't remember it. So yeah. you have to tell them what. Yeah. <laughs> if Let's see, said uh, it's not incarnations as as amoeba or a butterfly. It's more like experience, which is much shorter. So you don't really live the whole human life there. You just kind of <laughs> enter a butterfly experience and then come back. <clears throat> And that animals and stones can't really go beyond the animal or stone life, but humans can. That's what, what was the like, answer. Okay. Was. They've oh, got okay. an awareness, but it's different than our awareness. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, that, that's good. No, I had actually an experience where I was sitting outside. And I was looking at the ground. I'm sitting under this big old tree, 
and I felt myself beginning to melt into the light and with the tree. Oh. And as I looked up, I was like becoming one with the tree. Oh, cool. that's great! Really cool. Yeah, and then, and then at some point, I I was like, "What is happening?" And then I brought myself back and felt myself back in the ch in the chair that I was again. Yes. But, I yeah, I I love trees. Um, I hugged one once for a long time. I hope there was nobody watching. <laughs> but it was a great, great experience. Really, really was. They're so... Once you get their pulse, it's like really wonderful. You can just feel how good they feel, and, you know, and their pulse is very slow. Boy, it really calms you down, you know what I mean? Talk about being calmed down. Just take the pulse of a tree and you'll be like, Boom. Boom. <laughs> I mean, that's like the pulse of a tree. It's very, very slow. Even I'm, slower than that, even. So it's great. Trees are very loving. Yes, they are. They are. They, I love them. <laughs> yes, I do too. And they harbor no resentment. Uh, I mean, even if they've been chopped on and carved in and uh, misused, they just are themselves still. They don't change their, you know, they don't change how they feel about humans or anything, or animals or whatever. They don't change that feeling. It's just like, oh, well. It's, they go on and they accept things. It's just the way they are. It's just amazing. Hey, Jim? Yes? I have a question. Sure. Um, I just wanted to let you know, I, I, uh, I got my dad. I told him that he had a uh, Implants in the back of his ear and oh, <laughs> Jody, is that you? <laughs> and he was freaking out. Oh, he was feeling behind his leg and everything. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. And so he wanted me to ask you a question. Yes. He said, um, "Are there ETs who think that we are a delicacy?" And that is a dead question all day long. He wants that to know. The think we are a del a food delight. Oh. Um, yes, there was at one time the draconians thought of us as just lovely. They would uh, barbecue us and have us for dinner. But uh, and there was a couple other species as well <laughs> that I can think of. But draconians were probably the most um, uh, hungry for humans that I can think of. And those the reptilians, right? They're they're like dragons, oh, kind of dragons. and they actually have layers under the earth. I know some some um, channelers say there is no passages in the earth or openings in the earth underneath. But think about that; that's sort of impossible. And we've been told that they're they live in a very large underground area. We asked someone uh, if they prefer uh, young females, and they said no. They they don't really. Uh, they don't really have a taste for humanity anymore because they realize that it's wrong. We're actually a, a consciousness that was okay. different than theirs. But they were barbaric back then in the in the early days, in centuries and centuries ago, probably three or four thousand years ago. They were just, you know, come out and if they wanted to eat a human, they would. So, but but they said. Uh, I think it was Takur who explained, but maybe like Kesh. Maybe. That uh, it, it was human who invented, the, who thought that they, they want uh, young, beautiful women. The Draconians didn't really. Uh, oh, that's right. Prefer, uh, <laughs> maybe they were like younger, but they didn't worry about the gender. More yeah. Or are they beautiful or not? Yes, and they would sacrifice people to the Draconians just to keep them away for a while. So. Right. That was true. That's part of legend in, on Earth, and it is actually a true fact that they did oh. give people to to the Draconians to keep them away from the village or whatever. They made it. Well, I think there are some. There used to be humans that ate humans too, though. Oh yes, yeah, so, oh, there still are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still are. So. Not very many left, but there still are. So. Right. And then um, I had a question, and I couldn't. I was having some technical difficulties, and so I couldn't unmute before Takur left. 
But um, I was watching the History Channel, and they were talking about um, near Serbia, there were these um, devices underground mm -hmm. that, um, I guess, when they go to the area, it makes people sick. But I guess they were, these devices come out in time of need to protect the Earth. Do you know anything about that? Uh, the aliens might know something about that, but I don't really know anything about that. Okay. But I would imagine that, that that sounds like something that could possibly be. Uh, Jody, uh, if you want to discuss that, I'm aware of something that might help you um, get some knowledge on that. Oh, great. Thank um, you. There's this guy called uh, Alex Putney. So Alex as in Alexander. Putney, P-U-T-N-E-Y. And his website is called Human Resonance humanresonance.org there you will find articles uh, regarding that and also Stonehenge and also other uh, sacred sites throughout uh, the planet that are linked uh, uh, in what some call ley lines and standing yep. scalar waves etc they have to do with uh, the, the, um, the resonance system of the planet also sure. the Giza pyramids of course so on and so forth. So yes, if you want to check that out, you'll have there uh, there lots of information. Yes, there okay. are meridians and meridians and lines on the Earth that uh, that are they connect all of the greatest mysteries on the Earth are connected by these meridians and lines and and uh, they're all connected in some way or another and and they definitely are alien. I know that. Uh, the aliens don't like to tell you anything about things that we don't know enough about. So <laughs> <laughs> there are also human sources. This has to do with a, an aspect of history that is not uh, official history, but there is right. plenty yeah. of work coming through of guys like Gra uh, Graham. Um, I don't remember his second name right now, but uh, you just check out uh, occult history or untold history that has to do with civilizations uh, 22,000 years ago, like Atl Atlantis and others. All of those had technologies that would most likely uh, had alien origins. And, oh, definitely, uh, yeah. Then were misused, and then the, the, that part of history was traumatic for our conscious and got blocked. Yes. Yes, and they won't talk about it unless we find out for ourselves a lot of times. It's part of who we are to find it out what happens. So that's what I have. Um, I I want to know everybody's opinion on this. That it seems like there's the the amount of people that are waking up. It's like tripled. Yes. In in even the last couple of months, it seems to be a lot more. It's, it's the uh, beginning of the uh, ascension, and more people will be waking up all the time. What, I, yes. what I understand is that now people are starting finding others that already are awakened becomes more and more easier. Yes. So it's not that more is awakening right now, I feel. More that people finding others that are also are awakened. Okay. Yeah, it, I think it's a little bit of both of those things. And the energy is coming into the planet right now. Right, too. the fourth dimensional energy is slowly getting stronger, so mm -hmm. it's um, it's something to be reckoned with there. <laughs> Did anybody ask about, sorry to change the subject a little bit, did anybody ask about the Ukraine situation, America, Russia, because it seems to be turning into a potentially uh, warring situation. They asked uh, that a couple of times a few weeks ago, I think. Uh, but at that time, a few weeks ago, they didn't give really much information. They just said, uh, well, what did like they say? I said that uh, I asked if Ukraine has any special meaning. Maybe it has a special chakra or a special magical meaning. And like I said, other way around, the um, negative forces, MIC, military industrial complex, uses Ukraine as a, 
a playground to uh, see how they can can uh, control human masses. Basically, they uh, play out new scenarios which they want to do more of that. And uh, he said that unfortunately we should expect much more of what is happening right now. It's just kind of the beginning of uh, of a process when they, um, you know. Uh, just separate people and make them fight each other. Yeah, uh, I, 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 agree. I agree. I agree with that totally. Uh, just from my understanding and my intuition, it's uh, basically uh, foreign affairs, uh, American foreign affairs meddling with geopolitics and manipulation, basically, and trying to. Uh, it's basically a psyop, a psychological operation, to manipulate the uh, people's consciousness. Yeah. And bring fear basically into people's consciousness. Why only American? Well, it's more than just American, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't just say ju just American, but mainly uh, in terms of, of um, political maneuvers. And it's come out. There's some re releases of information of of uh, wires and uh, uh, emails from. Uh, American uh, representatives there trying to uh, do their chess moves in terms of politics. Yeah, chess. It's, it's a game of chess, of course. Yes. Basically, Back. it's a way of making money from my point of view. Uh, how do you make money on the market if you don't know the future? If you don't know the future, you can't make money on the market. But if you make the future, you can. So uh, making the future is very easy. You kind of manipulate the events. You explode things here. You release some information there, and um, you know you shoot few people here, and then there is retaliation. So you can manipulate the events really pretty easily if you, you know, use you know the, these tools have been developed middle of last century. All these spy movies, James Bond and others, you know how they make things like like you know it, very indicative was that <clears throat> first uh, victims in Ukraine were the people in crowd who had been shot by. By snipers, hidden, hidden snipers, and then there is retaliation. So somebody has money to send snipers just to to kill random people, just to uh, warm up the hatred. Max, did you ever ask um, any of them about the airplane? Did they. Um, yeah, we did. I don't remember. Um, I remember them saying. The alien said, yeah. there, it's already found. Somebody said, yeah. Uh, they but said, they're not telling anybody because there's yeah. something unusual with it. It's something uh, unusual, and they're studying it, and they're not going to release. They may never tell, tell you that they found it, but uh, at this point, they, did, they have found it. The authorities, yes. The authorities yes. have found it. It's mean. impossible for them not to have found it. That's pretty much what he said. Well, that's <laughs> so, exactly. That's what it yeah, and it's it's true because they have found it. The cash. Have, have have anybody yeah, seen that, uh, we, weeks ago? Lost show. Yeah, yeah. He said it a long time ago. Let's come back to that question. So we had that uh, video on our side where the logic was: let's open our, our minds to everything, and the aliens are secretive, and they did abduction program, so they have secret agenda, which is likely negative. What can you answer to that? Well, what did Takur say? She said, you will see, just, you know, feel with your heart, and you will see the truth. That's the answer. I mean, what can she say? You know, she, she doesn't have, no, no one, of, neither they or us, we don't have any way to prove anything. It's okay. really hard to prove that you're innocent. How can she prove that she's innocent? That yeah. she doesn't have a secret agenda. Right. Um, so, no okay. I understand what she said. Okay. That, if that's what she said, she's saying, do I resonate bad with you or do I resonate good with you? That's basically right. It. right. Right. It's the resonance that you feel. But, but, but even within that, sometimes it, it's not quite clear. Right. Clarity and is something different, yeah. Clarity right. Is you see, the whole the whole idea that we are here saying and we have our way and then somebody is an intruder from outside, the whole idea is kind of not very close to reality. The reality is it is a big experiment run from outside. 
Yeah. It's more like uh, patients in psychiatric clinics say that nurses are trying to take over the clinic uh, for themselves. That's that's, that's <laughs> Imagine the nurses being an aliens and psychiatric patients thinking that the nurses are secretive. They are secretive. And they have history of you know, abductions and treating patients badly, so they possibly are negative and they want to take over the psychiatric clinic. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, that, that's how it is. We are psychiatric, psychiatric clinic and the aliens are running it. Mm -hmm. And their way of doing it through, through secrecy because that's the nature of the experiment. What and I experienced... Yeah, oh, if you... Go ahead. No, sorry, Max. Uh, yeah. What I... What oh, I Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. So Did I interrupt you, Max? I'm sorry. I always do that. I want to just express something about intent because when I first applied, I had a lot of dreams and interesting sort of spiritual experiences where, you know, I kind of felt that or I was told I was being scanned, right? The atmosphere, the feeling in the dream was very good. I really felt good being around if these were representing the different ETs who were scanning me. Uh, what made me wonder, what made me wonder is that the atmosphere was dark. It wasn't, a, it was, there was no white light or golden light and I know there's a difference between the spiritual world and the higher levels which emanate like a really bright light and the ETs are not part of the spiritual world, even though they can be somewhat ethereal in their vibration to us, we can't really see them. So sometimes I wondered, okay, are they really from the light, even though they felt good, or not? And this sort of ties into the question of feeling their intention. Right. I couldn't tell 100%, to be honest, even uh, though it felt good. Yeah. I don't know how to answer that except for as as I guess as we move up in the light in the in our vibration we'll be able to better tell. I think so, uh, I, that just makes sense. To we me. don't have any proof, but uh, <laughs> Thanks, so, Jim. Say how to prove that Canada is not secretly planning to take over US. You know. How do you prove that Canada is innocent? They are very secretive. You know, it's almost impossible to tell that they are planning to take over the U.S. How do you prove that? Basically, going to Canada and walking around the streets wouldn't help. You know, if we were to go, you know, to alien world, how would we tell that you know they're not secretly planning to take over the Earth? Yeah. Uh, basically, you have to ask people who are outsiders and know from different perspectives. So. Ask Canada's enemies, you know, Iraq uh, or you know, who is right Canada's here. enemies? You know, no doubt. Well, well, the problem is not just is not just proving that, is uh -huh. that not only because if you let's say you take a wrong path, um, the problem sometimes is that you don't want to lead lots of people into this path because you think is the right one and at the end you have taken all these people along with you and oh yeah that's a, you don't want to have that responsibility yeah that's that's always a you know that always comes to, to the back of your head sometimes uh, because you, they they are good they seem to be doing all the good things and then you and then somebody will say something that goes well yeah of course they're gonna do good they want you to follow them and you know but uh, what we've seen so far they genuinely seem like they're on our side so yes. otherwise they could have taken over already we are but, doing just what you said we we are taking a, a leap of faith and right. leading other people right? and leading other people right <laughs> and and so that is a, that is a scary it's but, a scary but I mean, how do you know? Like it reminds me of that Outer Limits, uh, where they had all these wonderful aliens come onto our ship, and they had yes, yes. that say <laughs> how to serve humanity, and it was actually a cookbook. So yeah, how, right, no. you were being served, right? They were they were serving them, right? So yeah, exactly. that was called that was called How to Serve Man. That was an awesome, right. awesome 
Twilight Zone. I was, but they were so nice and friendly, and they put you on the ship, and they were taking you back as a delicacy. So, um, <laughs> that's, they, no, he goes, oh no. look, there's a there's a book here that says how to serve man, and you open it up okay. and it's like all these different okay. recipes. So okay, I could give proof that right. they're not. Jim, so, I can give proof that they're not going to eat us because they would have taken me already. <laughs> because well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very quite ample for that. <laughs> well, well, just a little well, bit more serious. Uh, Everyone want to say something? What I no. am wondering about mm -hmm. is they are watching us whenever they like to watch us, what Bashar said. So they can be watching you. At any time, and what I wonder what other people will think about that, because of our privacy in the internet becoming more like nobody should watch you on the internet than in stores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You're changing the topic. <laughs> I, I just started the topic, and you're changing. So watching um, for Yale, there is no privacy for blues. No. No privacy for Pleiadian. There is some, but it's different. Uh, I mean, they are not watching us for porn. Uh, they are watching <laughs> us for something else, like more, more like emotional porn, but not not uh, erotical. <laughs> so I don't think that, that that matters. Again, we come here uh, in the third dimension, forgetting our all past lives. It is the nature of this physical 3D incarnation. They are much. They are different. They are four. No, all the aliens we talk to are four dimension. They are one level up. They have already graduated from third. We are freshmen or whatever, kindergarten, and they're already like, you know, university, that sort of thing. So for them, it's, it's very different. They wouldn't even able, wouldn't even able to live on Earth because it's third dimensional. So, so uh, saying that they want the Earth for themselves is, uh, is just a mistake. Uh, of course, uh, you know there is different flavors of those. Reptilians want to turn us one way, Orions another way. These are bad guys, and Pleiadians, Lyrans, Arcturians, uh, Syrians, <laughs> and Centurions, and our Dromedans. They are enlightened. They they want to help us, and basically right now they are guarding us and creating that very very. Uh, uh, how do you say protected environment for us? They are, you know, they they have to fight our enemies outside of the solar system, preventing the enemies to come through, and they have to like really co quarantine us so we can finally evolve naturally because that's the only way we can evolve. I have a question about that because yeah. if if we create our own reality, all right, and we're I would think that in the fourth, we would have a little, there would be a little more control over duality. You know, yeah. like we would be able, so why are they still having to to protect us so much? Do you see what I'm saying? I think we're sort of unique, and I, they, that's the only reason why I see so much protection, is that Without their protection, we won't last because the Earth flips over too many times, and does. There's a lot of different things that happen on our planet that don't happen on other worlds. That's a so. different question. She says that four dimensions should be shiny and rainbow, and everybody would be. No, 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 not shiny and rainbow, but less, less, less dual and more, more able to. I don't want to say control, but I guess that's that's as close as it gets to control what happens because you're more aware that you create your own reality. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. Who's to say that that's not true? That what's not true. Really? That what she says is true. That they do already create a better reality for themselves and but we have the same ability yeah we do we are no 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 yeah no yeah. But, but we are creating them to help walk us through these learnings and teachings they are our creation as well as this reality we create if we create our own yeah yeah right out there out there 
-hmm. nothing out there. It's all within us. Correct. So one of us is creating all these different ETs. To right. So, so that's my question. So, why do we need to keep creating so much duality, like the you don't um, the other ETs? Why? You can just create all pretty fun, uh, good, positive ETs in your reality if you want. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We agree. Right. What we do here, we uh, invite positivity. Basically, it's uh, the, 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 there is already all flavors of ETs. If someone focuses, if you focus on negative, you will find negative. If we can't focus on positive, we'll we'll find positive. And, and right. our but, path will split. But they're obviously pot is so so they're they're positive but they're still encountering negative. Oh yeah. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. so, so why is there so much duality with them? Right. We are putting that into them. Because because we created them. So we are making that little negative piece part of them too, for our own learnings, for our own, for some reason. But we created the ETs. We created their negativity too. So are we creating on? Are we putting onto them our view, our our reality, or? Well, we would have to for them to be able to deal with us. If 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 we didn't if they didn't understand who we were they couldn't deal with us and they couldn't help us so yes in a way we do give them everything that's human and they have to deal with it so they can help the alien part of them can help the human part of us does that make sense <laughs> John, yeah yeah but because... yes we do put that on them we have to I mean they couldn't they couldn't even talk to us if if they didn't understand right so so my question if if we were out of the picture yeah would they still ha be encountering uh, let's say the 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 other aliens would would that even have to be such a high pro or would they just say, yeah. know about them but never encounter them no i think that the way it is is that every scenario is played out in every dimension there is a dimension for every scenario. I believe that, and they're all being played out to see which ones turn out like what. Does you, see, that... you see, that there are different perspectives. Yeah. So right now we kind of stepped out to a perspective where we talk about human experience and alien experience. If we come to a different perspective, we know pretty well the history of the of the galactics. So uh, what what they tell us. So these imaginary ETs, which materialize, manifested in our reality, they tell us their history, and now it becomes, as more and more you join, uh, it becomes your history as well. So each of them evolved through through 3D into 4D, and now they live in our uh, in our. I'm coming back to history to mm -hmm. in our Milky Way galaxy, except Andromedans, which are in Andromedan galaxy. And there is a lot of bad guys, and Liran's had, you know, history of uh, wars and uh, moving around, and Pleiadians, and and so on. And right now, Gorg near this alliance of uh, Liran's, uh, Pleiadians, Arcturians, and Yael, and new group which is friendly reptilians, they kind of uh, like peace, peace force, peace uh, police, peace army, which kind of uh, put an, an order in, in that part of the galaxy. So they are in charge, but they kind of militarized. And they're very lighted, and they trust uh, the main uh, guidance to Arcturians who are most evolved, and they're kind of multidimensional and, and nice and trusted by everyone. So that we know, and um, and that's now, now, the, now, now the reality. So they come here to third dimension and help the Earth to evolve because Part of the reason is they know some of the future. In some of the timelines, the Earthans, uh, the humans, uh, evolve to fourth dimension and become 
very important for the galaxy. They basically, in, in some of the scenarios, they save the galaxy from, from the darkness. Basically, we already, in the future, we already evolved. And they know that they have to help in this in this group of timelines to to there are multiple timelines, but in, in our area of timelines, kind of the the branch there, the collection of timelines, they need to help us to, to, to make it. Obviously, in some of the timelines we already failed, we already destructed ourselves. And in other timelines we already evolved. But they're kind of playing, they are they're also playing in their fourth dimension as we are now. They, they are more aware of their incarnations. They are capable of talking to different spiritual entities and to higher selves and others. We, we, and and they, they, they know about past lives and things like that. They are telepathic. So there is a lot of miracles there. But, but the reality also is quite military, quite dark. Um, and, and that's what we're, who we are talking, talk, talking to. And yeah. you know, I'm playing, I'm in this area already since 2009. So I have been kind of waving and trying, and I understand the importance of my choice. So at some point, I look at the dark ones, and really, it looks very depressing. And as you look in the darkness, you kind of uh, sink into that. So then you have to make a conscious choice, what I'm making all the time, to go with the light ones and focus on in the in the positive scenarios and kind of ignore all the politics, ignore all the darkness. And and you know, many aliens already do that. So so. Our friends are kind of military, practical, dealing in the third dimension. But many others, they ignore that and they go up and they are more like into six and seven, where the physicality is less and less and less. But in fourth dimension, there there are wars, there is death, and uh, you know, for Yael, you know, their 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 bodies is just vessels. So when Yael uh, crashed in Roswell. In Roswell, they crushed. Uh, they were captured, and the human military was surprised that they are not afraid of death, and they are not afraid of death because they know when they die, they just uh, keep their memory of past lives and incarnate in a new body. Also, they have the high mind, so they they kind of everything they experience is experienced by the whole community, the whole the whole civilization. So for them, the body is not as precious. They they are born already kind of with the mind of an adult. They have the childhood experience, but uh, they, they still remember a lot of their past, and we, we don't. So for them, the death is not as scary. They, they still take care of their bodies. They live 300 to 600 years, you know, these civilizations, but, but, uh, and they have wonderful medicine, but they're not afraid of death. And we, and, uh, we are afraid it's kind of part of our human experience here. Mm -hmm. That's psychiatric clinic. We chose, we chose to come here to forget. That was the extreme. You know, all these dimensions is uh, you forget more. The, the God forgets, you know, that he is, and he becomes the creator. He forgets part of it. Then it goes down, 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 and and we are at the level where we forget everything, and that helps us to feel like gods. That's well, part of I I I actually was. Um reading a quote by I think it's called swoosh Sounds and like and he was talking about how we have the gift of remembering and he was sort of implying that he was kind of jealous because he didn't have that yeah and, and we have the gift of going back all what you forgot yes that's yeah. really what we already forgot you right. chose to forget and 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 as Bashar said, you jump here in this reality, but you sort of ask your friends to watch over you, and these are our spirit guides. So these spirit guides kind of watch over you and guide you through that experience on, on Earth, because you know otherwise you wouldn't be able to experience that. But then they kind of pull you out. And our alien friends also they protect the Earth, they protect the Earth from flipping, they they keep an eye on. You know that that is uh, actually in that movie Richard Dolan was. I know Richard Long, he's here in Rochester. We really cherish him. He is a historian and he works with documents. So he went and looked at documents and witnesses of uh, in the US military and uh, around the globe military what, what was, there wrote a few books, what was documented. And one of that, it comes over and over that alien prevent a, a, a big destruction. So they allow small destructions, but when the conflict, uh, nuclear conflict, is too dangerous, they 
come and make a show, they kind of shut down rockets. And that's happened in 50s, 60s, and so on. So, oh, all right, 60s and so on. Uh, so that is well documented. A lot of witnesses show, see the, 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 the saucers and how they just shoot the rockets somewhere in the air and they basically disappear. So that costs a lot of money and military war devastated. They have no control of that. But basically, the nuclear I think you guys muted yourself. There you go. <laughs> yes. I, I kind of ignored it, and I was like, did I accidentally mute them? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't hear you guys. I think I might have. Uh, I don't If they are mute themselves. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I just I can't can hear them. <laughs> I don't think they oh. I can't hear them. <laughs> they, they oh, interesting. Yeah, somebody <laughs> muted the whole room. It's, oh, yeah. interesting. Gabriel. It said Gabriel muted the whole yeah, room. I said <laughs> that I, I did it accidentally. They had to unmute themselves. Oh, I see. <laughs> how do you mute the whole talk? I don't even know how to do that. How'd you do that, Gabriel? Yeah. How'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> the is probably, I didn't the think at that time. Was talking on and on and on, and we're like, <laughs> can't hear anything. They look really confused. Max especially looks confused. <laughs> it's like we'll we'll become so silent. <laughs> yeah. Max, can you hear us? Can you guys hear us? <laughs> If no. you can, you have to yeah. unmute yourselves. Oh, I was muted. <laughs> ah, okay. You're back. Welcome yeah, back. You're Max. back. Uh, when I was when I was talking, have you? Did you hear me? No. 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 <laughs> I have a question now. Aliens muted you. Oh. I have a question. Okay. So what is the last thing you you heard? <laughs> um. I don't even I can't know. remember. <laughs> How long were we muted? For like a About three days. minutes. Three minutes. Two minutes, maybe. Oh, okay. Well, through Max's talk. Yeah, like, through Max's soliloquy yeah. there. At 8.41, about there, it got muted. Oh, so about <laughs> six minutes. Okay. All right. I think the last thing I was talking about, Richard Dolan. Did you talk uh, here about Richard Dolan? Yes, yes, the documents. Yes. All right. That's about it. <laughs> no, no, Richard Dolan was at the end, yes. Yes. That uh, well, they prevented the nuclear war many times. Richard Dolan lives there in Rochester? Yes, it's our celebrity. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yes. Okay, so I was wondering, when the aliens observe you, do they give you certain tests? Do they test you out on things? Only if they're told to, but most of the time it's just observation and the uh, implants or monitors, and there's no real tests, except that if something is starting to go wrong, they fix it. Like uh, what? Like if like the implant starts to hurt or it's not picking up the information, then they just fix the implant. I would... I would correct a little bit. Uh, I get a lot of tests, and my oh, main, you do. You're different. My tests are typically in <laughs> violence. I'm pretty Mine are too. I have rage, what? and oh. when I feel righteous, I feel I feel rage, and it could hurt people. Uh, you know, last time it happened, you know, 50 years ago, all right, 45 years ago, <laughs> 40 years ago, but still, it was pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but it's still there. It's like in Russia, you're trained to you know to fight physically. Uh, you you know in school. 
So they test me, and they give me all sorts of tests where I, you know, I'm provoked to to fight. And I score better and better with years. Like a year ago, I was pretty bad with that. I, you know, I was provoked in a sleep, in a dream, I would fight. Uh, maybe not kill, but fight and physically uh, fight. Uh, I have the same thing. The the dream though, I feel like they know who I am because um, I I would have dreams where I would kill shadow people. They would uh, call me um, in my dreams. They'd call me the Shadow Slayer. I don't really know why. <laughs> they knew, but I wonder if they just knew. I don't know if it was the past life or anything, but like I would like literally kill shadow people. I don't really know why, <laughs> but um. Those were bad. Like, I feel like they would. They kind of just. They wondered about that area of me, and the other night I had a dream. I was like outside my in my backyard, and um, there's this green alien on the roof, and it looks um, reptile like. It didn't look reptilian. It was really it was small, and I waved at it, and it just jumped at me and started attacking me. And I'm like, what the hell do I do? So I just. I kicked it and ran inside because I was like, okay, I don't really want to hurt this guy because he's kind of little and I don't really want to hurt him. But um, <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I I felt kind of bad <laughs> kicking him. But was this in yeah. a dream or reality? It it was in a dream. If oh, that was okay. reality, I'd probably be like, oh my gosh, what is happening? <laughs> no, I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was a dream. I, I had. <laughs> I had this experience, maybe you guys can tell me what you think that was. I was sitting at a dentist's office and I'm waiting, I'm waiting for him and he was taking long, I had already gone in and I'm sitting on my chair and all of a sudden I feel like the floor starts to dissolve mm -hmm. and every everything just started to just like go away. Mm -hmm. And I was started to freak out there, and I was like, "What is going on here?" And the the chair was always there, but I saw the floor, and everything started to just to like dissolve. It's called your shifting. Yes, it's a shift. It's a dimensional shift. It's from usually happens during meditation, though, or during times when you're uh, really spiritually aware. During those times, sometimes uh, your arms will disappear, your the floor will disappear, but it's a dimensional shift, definitely, uh -huh. and it's a usually starts with yellow. Really? Yeah. I don't know, uh, but uh, basically, it could be expectation of pain that caused you to shift. Yeah. No, I think I think it was more what he said because that day I know I was very relaxed, very. Uh -huh. mm Hmm. Yeah, it wasn't. The doctor wasn't doing anything. Yeah, it's a so it's a dimension, it's sort of a meditative thing. Sometimes it can happen, and the, the first thing some people notice is like your arm will turn yellow, or something will turn yellow, and or a different color than it should be before you go into a dimensional shift. Uh, don't be afraid of paralysis. Uh, that is. <laughs> So Bashar told the story. So you know he was uh, some lady asked him that you know in the exchange like that that she was uh, friends with aliens and they were visiting her and she liked them like kind of gray aliens and at some point they took her and started dancing with her and she danced with them and they were happy but then they started spinning. And spent span faster and faster, and she tried to kind of get and, and they hold her uh, hands, and she tried to get get rid of that and stop, but uh, the spinning continued. They, they held her hands stronger and stronger, so it hurts, hurt it, and she kind of was offended. After that, she started being afraid of it. And Bashar said, "We apologize. Our technology went wrong, and uh, you, you know, the, the whole." The, Dimensional transfer went. Uh, it's like, like uh, in Star Trek, what they use that. Uh, um, um, yes, the uh, transporter. Transporter. So the transporter kind of malfunction, and they had to hold you not to lose you in dimensions. That's why, why you know the spinning was uh, a malfunction, and holding was to keep you not lost. Right. And we apologize for that, but uh, nobody wanted to hurt you. 
So uh, also he commented that it's it's natural when you do dimensional transfer, you kind of you're not used to move in fourth dimension, and the third dimension you already lost, it, uh, you left it, so you're not in control of your body anymore. So, you know, when I'm meditating, every time I go somewhere and I come back and I'm paralyzed, and I'm used to that, it's natural for me. I kind of slowly come back, my, and I, I, I kind of hold it, I, I want to stay there in a higher dimension, so when I come back, I kind of delay that, but, you know, when, I, when I'm when i in a hurry, I, I'm very often on, on time schedule, so I have to run fast somewhere else. So. so my way to come back first, I control my breathing, I, my breathing wakes up first. And then I kind of move my fingers and and my my fingers on the legs, and then I slowly I give like myself. If I have time, I give myself several minutes to come back. So don't be afraid of shifts. Basically, typically you are well, you know, you are protected there. Typically, as they say, as they say, shift happens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, about the, them observing you, uh, we. We asked Lakesh, you know, what can he see about us from from his perspective? Or I think few others we also asked, and they don't see us physically. They, you know, he he doesn't know. He, they see our uh, higher part, the you know, etheric body. They can see our emotions, the colors, that sort of thing. They know our mental state, but not what we think, not what we physically do. So like it's pointless oh. going outside in my backyard and waving at them. <laughs> oh my gosh. Also, once uh, they, it was a positive move, but they but, kind of did a recording, holographic recording of of a certain thing. Uh, Jim and I were in a certain you know event, and they said that they. Uh, Came there or whatever, organized to have it holographic recorders or really see the physicality of what was happening. There was nothing special, but you know they wanted someone wanted to see us, you know how we physically look, and they did that recording. But that's not what they usually do. Normally, they they follow you through other things, higher dimensional, not through your physical thing. Hey, Jim, with, the, with the implant, what is it giving them? What kind of information are they getting with that? I think we Jim left, maybe. That's what I wondered, too. I think Jim left. Jim is not here, I think. It's somebody oh. else's here. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah, yeah. hello. But you, you, can, you can take your time. So what I wanted to say, uh, implants, uh, tracking. I, got, I was given an implant when I needed to... Uh, when I need, when I was to travel from uh, Maryland to here, I was given an implant. It was painful, and I didn't know what it was there. But then they answered later. And for health, for shifting up, they they kind of uh, give implant to keep you healthier and help things. There are other reasons. Hello. So welcome. Thank you. I'm listening. Oh, all right. Okay. I have a question. I promised my son to ask a question, and I forgot. So my son uh, watched, I think, uh, an episode where uh, they taught him how to create a black hole in his home. And uh, basically create the whole universe in his home. And he said, uh, he asked aliens. He said, asked me to ask aliens if uh, he gets into this black hole, how do, does he return back to his home? Is there a way to come back? Black holes. Yeah, if he creates a black hole, a toy black hole in his home, and is sucked into that, how he comes back? It depends. What dimension is he in? Third. He will not come back. He will be destroyed in a black hole. That's what they thought. Thank you. Other dimensions might be able to return. All right. But none that I know of successfully at this time. I see. But there is one, but I will not speak of it. I see. There is one. So, not 
it's not my species, as you would call it, a species. What's your species? I don't know what you would call my species. What word do you want me to use? I a human looking. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not human looking. Are you like any of our animals? No. It doesn't matter what I look like anyway. I'm only here listening. Oh. Do you want to read poetry? No? <laughs> no. All right. You're welcome. Please keep listening if you want mm. to contribute. So implants. Um, controlling implants, I don't think they control much, but I think they... Some of the implants are for forgetting, I think. Uh, they, at some point, uh, some uh, abductees and contactees are trained as risky workers. And they are taken to the ships, are, have training rooms and screens and some scenarios. So that they, uh, the aliens, especially the greys, were trained humans to be risky workers, to organize um, saving uh, refugees and you know, moving to them to the ships. So this memory of train, training uh, was repressed using implants, I think. So implant turns off that memory, but when it's needed, if there is a catastrophe and a, a catastrophic event on Earth, mm -hmm. uh, the implants would turn on the memory so the humans can do their job of helping others to get to the ships and leave. And that's like one of the examples of use of implants. Okay, but like, can you talk to them through the implant, or is that more like data that they're getting through that? I know one person who says he talks through implant. I forgot his name, but I know who he is. Sheldon Nidal. He says he has an implant which gives him direct con contact. He can talk to them anytime. I don't know any others who can speak to them through implants. Uh, also, uh, one more thing is that typically you are uh, monitored by one of the species and or one of the alliances and not another. For example, if uh, Zeta Grays come and find that you have Pleiadian or Yael or Gerfitnir implant, they won't touch you because they kind of respect each other's territory. So some are subjects, patients or subjects of that uh, race and some are subject of that culture and some are subject of that culture. Some of the implants are kind of put here illegally, like reptilians are not allowed to do that, but they still do that. So, but Gurkfitnir and Galactic Federation, of, I don't know if Galactic Federation of Light does, that of Light does implant, but Gurkfitnir certainly does. And Zeta Gray is certainly do. Is there a way that you can find out which species you're being watched by? Uh, ask Lakesh, it usually tells you. Okay. But basically, it's nice to know that you're protected by one alliance and uh, others wouldn't touch you. That, that kind of gives a peace of mind. No one can touch. Uh, but Zeta Gray is used to abduct people. No one can touch you now. Oh, things changed since then? There is more rules. You have entered a new Time in your evolution. Since then, you are not to be touched without permission. That is nice to know. Thank you. Oh, oh, Thank you. you. That makes me feel much better. <laughs> Who is ensuring that? Is it gods or aliens? Aliens will protect the humans, they cannot be touched. It is the policy. Are you four dimensional? You might understand that to be true, yes. Same reality as Takur and Lakesh? Oh, 
I am in a different window. Time, time wise? Yes. Yes. You're welcome. Here. Welcome. Yes. Do you wish to tell us anything? I came more for to be enlightened by you mm. than you by me. We are honored. Thank you. Do, you. do you wish to ask some questions? Perhaps. Go ahead. Your emotional intensities, does that cause pain? Sometimes. Yes. We. Yes. Depression, I, I meet it every day. <clears throat> Is it result in physical pain? Yeah, it's called neurosis. Yeah. Yeah, neurotic pains are typical. Heartache. Of, often Heartache. you don't realize it, but yes, physical, yes. It kind of could be physical. Spiritual goes into mental, into physical. Do yes. you wish to release yourself of these ailments? Yes. Uh, we want to be more successful. Uh, success for me is more, and service. Success and service is higher priority. If I have to Pain for me is kind of comes as given, but of course I would be happy to be healthier. Do you mean do you mean in terms of the emotions if we want to be released of them? Yes. Oh. Um perhaps if we if they weren't they had didn't have such a big range. Oh um, the yeah. emotions. Or if you just wake up tomorrow without emotions, uh no, not wake up without emotions. <laughs> um, I'm saying not such a big range within one particular emotion. Um, that's that's what I mean. Like we can we can go from zero to sixty very fast, and sometimes zero even to sixty. <laughs> oh, just uh, all right. Just just a number, just a number. Um, so no, that it has no meaning. No, no, it was just an example. It was just an example. It just it means that we are we are capable of feeling that emotion, not having it to having it very intense in a very short period of time. Well, there are people who have less range of emotions, right? Yes. But autists have uh, very limited emotions. Correct. I think we have a huge range of emotions. Like humans are different. We have all varieties, and some are more successful than others. And different intensities. Yeah. Varieties of humans and different intensities of emotions. I'm pretty happy with my emotions. I think I am pretty balanced. I kind of have certain control over them. I would like to have more control, especially when I have public speaking and or doing interviews. I would like to be more in control of my emotions, but uh, it just you know comes with age and practice. I sense pain in the physicality of your body. Yes. How do you alleviate yourself of this pain? Oh, a lot of things. Uh, sleep, meditation, uh, just control over your emotions, uh, food, healing, uh, herbs, uh, burning incense. Mm -hmm. uh, some people use alcohol, drugs, and stuff of that sort. No. <laughs> nonsense. Um, some of that was nonsense to me. I understand. Do you have some insights on dealing with pain and the emotions? I sensed you wanted to share something. Thank you. Is that correct? Perhaps, but not now. Okay, thank you. Perhaps. You can put your, you can pronounce your mm. opinions. Mm. I kind of gave my overview, but... I feel welcome now. You're welcome indeed. What's your name? What's your name? Dilir Shandeni Borofundi. Dilir Shandeni Borofundi. 
Can we call no, you Delio no. for short? Daniel. Delio. Delio for short. Delio is acceptable. Thank you. Welcome, Thank Delio. You. Do you have any more questions for us? When your brains function, can you feel the synapse? No. No. Individual, no. I think it's distributed. But sometimes there is pain localized, but it's not synapse. It's like a big part of the brain, like three, four centimeters. I see much activity in the brain, electricity, it seems almost painful. What? It's, it's balanced with, with time. Basically, we, we are very flexible, and as we grow, we balance. Your Can you... systems are very... I don't know the word. Delio? Delio, yes. May I uh, ask a question? Yes. Are you aware also of the different uh, levels of uh, brain function? I don't know if we, we could call it that, but there's other awareness centers in our bodies, such as our hearts, our intestines. There's also intelligence there. Can you speak to that? Can you share you, how you are experiencing awareness not only through the brain in the head but also through those uh, other levels? Yes, that's what I was trying to do. You have yes. too many functions happening at once. It's inefficient. It makes us adaptable. But Not for the most part. No. It makes you less adaptable. Some, sometimes we feel that there's so much going on in, and we don't know what to do. Yeah. That is confusing for us. Yeah, but a lot of the functions of the body we're not aware yes. that they're happening. It is much going on at once to be efficient. So a lot of those functions are in automatic, so we're not aware that they're happening. I, yes, I am aware of that now. At first I was wondering how you could even speak. I, I can see that. Delio, are you aware of the personality crystal, the design crystal, and the magnetic monopole in the body? I am aware of something similar to that. Yes. And can you see our binary nature, the personality aspect and the body consciousness aspect? I can switch to different an analytical views. I can see physiology, radiology, orology. I can see spented toss. I can see shukra. And I can see many other forms and colors that tell different things about your particular bodies. Could you tell us how your bodies work and how, how does your physiology work, please? My physiology is much simpler and more dynamic. So and assisted by Cybernetics. As a child, you get your assistance for the body, and it makes it work 
at a high level. What we would call a type of artificial intelligence combined with you uh, with um, biolo biological material. It's more biological than intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, when you incarnate on your planet, do you remember anything? At the age of a certain age, you are given back one third of your memory from the past. And at another age, you are given another third of your memory from the past, and where you become fully mature, you will find your memories of the past complete. But the final memories of the past will connect you with all the present people in your life. Have you ever... Oh. You understand? Yes. Thank oh, you. Very much about that. Have you ever observed people in love? Have you ever observed the human emotion of love and what that looks like in color? Mm, yes. <laughs> what does it look like to you? It's very messy. <laughs> <laughs> are, are we very confusing for you to understand that we even exist? You have an existence that is difficult for me to understand. It is very diverse and confusing and not straightforward. You are correct. <laughs> Can I ask you to do how about emotions? Do you have as many emotions as we do? I would categorize them as impulse, trajectory, synapse. And they are varied but they do not last nearly as long or have nearly as much impact as your emotional systems seem to be able to handle. Which means you don't have physical illness in your, in your beings? Physical illness is necessary for two reasons. We must get by the first disease by the age of the second degree and we must learn why the disease moves from one person to the other. Mm. Tell you do you have some more questions for us? What would you like to know or ask? I have perceived many of my answers already. Very well. But thank you for your interest. I You're may, very welcome. I may have another question shortly. My favorite emotions are Self-sacrifice, or being inquisitive and wonder, emotion of scientific wonder. Self-sacrifice would end your life. How can that be positive? Oh, <laughs> self-sacrifice, not necessarily in a full, full-blown self-sacrifice. Uh, just sacrificing your personal interest for, for the needs of others. 
not the whole life. Self-sacrifice in terms of service. Service. People who go to war to defend their country, for example, that would be a type of sacrificing oneself. It wouldn't be my favorite, but, but that would be okay. I will for the sake my children. Sacrifice a lot of your own time and interest for the sake of your children. They are my favorite. Well... I must... resonate on that. It makes little sense at three angles. Continue. Oh, scientific wonder? Yes. Uh, being fallen in love, just the beginning is so wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sort of fl flirting uh, period of, of falling in love. Mm. When you just learn your, your, the other person and share your life and things of that sort, it feels so wonderful. Analyzation complete, yes. Thank you. How connected are you on your planet? Are you very connected to each other or are you working together, your whole society? We work together, but we are separate analogies, a wrong word, separate in our analysis of ourselves but we connect to each other for security and warmth in emotion. So do you have a partner? I have, as you would have a partner. You have children? I have offspring, offspring, offspring. Uh -huh. Not the same as children on your world. Do you have male and female on your world, or does it look different? There is male and female when it is necessary. So you also have more neutral. There are those that remain neutral for all time, and those that remain male or female for all time. There are those who choose their sexuality and change it. What color are you, may I ask? Brown. Brown would be the color. Thank you. And can you guess how far your planet is, or your inhabitant, inhabitant is from where we are now? How I, did you come to Jim? I don't have to guess. Oh, how much? Um, how far are you from us? It's, it's not a concern. Oh. How did you find Jim? It was an interesting opening. Pleasant. In Have you calming sensation? Then I heard the voices. It was different. This is a new experience. We always have great 
love or new experience. Are, are your world exploring our world a lot or is this a new experience for your world? We have been here before, but it has been many years in your time frame. Well, not could Japan you have any chance, right? I am not. Okay. Could you give us a sample of your native language, a blessing, for example? Blessing. What is blessing? Or a greeting. Greeting. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Do you have poetry in your world? Yes. Do you mind reading a poem? Yes, I might. It's OK. <laughs> so have you been observing us, our civilization? My people are not truly concerned. You are a curiosity. I understand. Thank you. But a delightful curiosity, if there is such a thing. Yes, yes, it's a good formula. How do you see God? With my heart. How does it appear to you? I cannot explain. There are no words for your planet. It is beyond what you comprehend. Your images of God are small. Is God digital? <sighs> <laughs> Not worthy of a response. Thank you. I'm sorry. It's very confusing for us. It seems to be very confusing for, from other sp species about human beings, and human beings things think themselves to be a little bit confusing too. You are confusing creatures. You do not have purpose until it is right in front of you and then you grab on to it it seems like you do not have much grounding it's like you... we are as human being we are born like if fish were born onto the land and somehow have to find a way into the ocean fish yes so we, as human beings, we get born in a reality we are not so comfortable about, and we somehow have to find our way to where we're supposed to be. Yes. We have more planning from birth. But there are things you must experience that are outside the realms of planning but not like this. 
I need to leave. It was a pleasure. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Farewell, Delio. Bye bye. Blessings. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi, Jim. Wow, Jim. Welcome back, Jim. Thank you. Where was I? I don't know who that was. I mean, <laughs> you didn't hear it before? No, that was a first for him, whoever that was. It was not a draconian. It was four-dimensional brown <laughs> being, which is not anything like human. Delio for short. Yes. <laughs> Delio. Delio? Delio. Yeah. Well, there was a longer name that he gave us, but just for us to uh, well, be able to say it. Well, the thing is, he left me hot and sweaty. Mm. I'm all sweaty. Um, my There's sweat on my skin and on my mm, forehead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all yeah. really, really hot well, and sweaty. He was from a very warm place. Really? <laughs> Uh, Sandy, Sandy, yes. what, what did you feel when he was there? You're very sensitive. I was wondering if you felt anything. Um, I sensed that he, he just did not have information to share with us, that he just wanted to be here to learn from us. But it, it was a little bit uncomfortable because it's almost like he didn't want to take questions and he wasn't ready to share very much of about himself. So I felt so a little uncomfortable. Did he have a good spirit? How, how was the spirit level? Did it feel good? Um, he wasn't negative necessarily. More neutral. Yeah, he felt yes. neutral. Very good. Very neutral. Yeah. Yeah. He was, very he was neutral. Okay. Very neutral. There was yeah. so much I wanted to find out about. Did we get his planet or no? No. No, he wouldn't give it. He said it is different time frame that our uh, location occurs. So he might be from the future or the past or whatever. Yes, I got the feeling that we were pressuring him a lot with questions. That's why I tried to invert the dynamic and t ask him if he wanted to place questions. I got that feeling too, you that he help. was a bit uncomfortable. Jaguar, you helped greatly. You are so wonderful diplomat. Yes, yeah. I'm starting to understand and accept that maybe my role has to do with, with diplomatic relationships. Yes, yeah. um, uh, putting aside the modesty and uh, the because modesty. this is also also helping me to understand how I fit in. So well, Yeah, you yes. know, uh, said the good things. You opened several doors very graciously. Yes, one's, one has to be delicate in yeah. communication with... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to watch that one because I was really out of the loop on that one pretty much. <laughs> I'm more out of the loop on that one than many of the others. So basically, no, but I think, I think in the beginning he was trying to get a sense of our energy. Oh. And how we felt about him. Uh -huh. Because remember, then he said, I feel welcome now. So uh -huh. I think he was trying to make sure that we were okay also with him being here. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that Jaguar did it was basically, I asked him a question and he was kind of protective and he didn't want to answer. But when Jaguar offered him, if he w could ask questions and we would answer. That was a great move, and I think it opened everything. And uh, it's not my style, but I think it's a great style. Yeah, it it was it was more like he came and see what's going to happen. Yeah, right? I mean, you just saw it well. You know, I just couldn't, couldn't see that. Mm -hmm. and you saw that. You saw the 
that good uh, need which could be addressed. He felt very uncomfortable at first, and and very neutral, not happy or sad or up or down or anything, but uncomfortable was the word. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think he was looking to be more of a bystander I, uh, and not be the center of attention. Um, I think he was, it seemed like he went, didn't say much to me. I, it sounded didn't. I couldn't hear him say much. Yeah, I, I. He did. He did give, I think, a fair amount of information for he, someone who didn't want to uh, talk too much. I think he. I think he's very proud of his beingness and certain rules searching. that things should happen a certain way. He looked for words in my brain that I couldn't give him, so. I knew that. <laughs> I couldn't well, give him the words. I couldn't. Jim, I had no idea what he was getting at. So, towards um, the beginning, Jim, he said, "I'm glad I don't look human." He said, "I'm glad we don't look human." <laughs> oh, I was well, what he looked like. <laughs> I don't know what they do look like. Yeah, really. Well, we well, we, we have, must not look too good to them. Well, remember, he asked, "Is there any animals like that we could yeah. play?" And they said, "No." Oh, so he he wasn't. Like uh, any any of our animals that that he knew of, <laughs> uh, he was very uncomfortable for the uh, for like at least the first part of it, mm -hmm. for sure. Remember, he said he saw a nice opening. So yeah, he said what? He, he saw a nice opening. A nice opening. Okay. Uh, Basically, we discuss yes. how they see us, and that, and then we discuss. Plans. These two things kind of. I think the question how they see us, you know, how do they is, 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 were, you, were you meditating and then I, all of a sudden I I started to feel real logy, almost sleepy, and uh, he came in differently than most uh, aliens do because he came in with a much lighter jolt than hmm. most uh -huh. of them yeah. do. Yes, it it was almost uh, imperceptible for us. Uh, like Max turned around and all of a sudden, like, oh, Jim's no longer here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was very soft. A very soft entry. He, it's like he was trying to put me to sleep. I could tell that there was somebody there, but it was like I was starting to go to sleep. And uh, I said, okay. Because I said, fishing, is this okay? And he said, it's fine. And so I was like, oh. okay. I said, okay. So then I sort of sensed that there was somebody there. but And then he just came in. He was very uncomfortable at first. I let him go. I just, I didn't, I didn't uh, push him or, or do anything. So he pushed me aside a little. But I couldn't hear him talk. Did he not talk for a long time? Yeah, he didn't. Because I did well, it. He came in, and I did not hear him say anything. He came from, from the beginning. He just wanted to listen. He said. Yeah. Well, Max was talking when he first came in. I, I, think. I, I noticed he came in, but I didn't want. You know, I give give the the the, the aliens time to accommodate to the body. So, but the, he was silent longer than usual. Oh, okay. That's what I sensed. That a lot of silence from him. A lot of silence. I An evasiveness. That. Yeah, Evas very evasive. Oh, really? He didn't want to share information. It's not important. Or Oh, uh, he's not allowed to share the location of the planet. Most of them cannot. You yell, yeah. still don't tell us. And Lirons don't tell us. Only Pleiadians tell us. You know, only one planet. And not from the Pleiadians. We know through, through the Karaya because, you know, he knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but sometimes some of the things we said to him was very like childless, ridiculous thing. Oh, really? and, and, and then he didn't want to answer it because it was a ridiculous question. Yes, I appreciated a lot the, the blunt and uh, straight communication and setting boundaries very clearly. It's something that us humans have some, ch uh, in comparison, have some trouble with. It was a little bit shocking for some of uh, our sensitivity, but I, f I found it really interesting, really curious. He was very blunt 
and very straight with boundaries like I won't go there I don't want to talk or your question is uh, unreasonable it was very very clear communication okay okay wow okay yeah but perhaps it just didn't think it was necessary to to answer some of those questions that it was irrelevant okay yeah he seemed like a very uh, sure of himself he was uncomfortable at first but then he got very sure of himself which which we never asked I wonder if we would have had a better idea of what he does oh I didn't we didn't we didn't think to even ask that knowing questions to me he was like he I'm here to listen, you know, and I'm not really taking Yeah, it. no, not specifically, but in general, like if he's a scientist or if he's yeah. uh, yeah. uh an Oh, did he really say that? No, no, nothing was extreme. I didn't even go no. to the only the, question no. he was Max, are you draconian? He said no. Mm -hmm. Oh but yeah. yeah, we don't know what he is. That's okay. We can be yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Right. Jim, Jim okay. would it would it uh, channel the UN? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was different. That was a very different one. Yeah. Okay, not nation, but universe. <laughs> yes. Yes, universal. I don't know. That one was yes. very different. Yeah. I don't. I don't think we've ever encountered one quite like that it one. It sounded before. familiar to me, though. It sounded familiar to you. Wow. Because he was in my session. Okay. Oh. Well, he was in your session? He was in my session. Your past life regression. It, it sounded like that person. Oh. That, the, the tonal, you know, the, the, the tonality? Sounded, yeah. And the, the way he was speaking, it sounded like the person that came through my session. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. See, but what's, I, like, I didn't feel uncomfortable with the fact that he, didn't want to answer certain questions. Or maybe it was because I'm used to dealing with that kind of personality okay. of people. I don't think he was trying to make you guys feel uncomfortable. Not at but all. We just have to no. deal with different uh, kinds of beings. It's yeah. all, all about that. No? I, th I think he di didn't want to do that from the beginning. I don't think he understood how we feel, you know, because he was asking about our emotions and stuff, right? Yeah. I was just really curious. He didn't, I don't think he meant to just like, uh, make us sensitive towards his seriousness. I think uh -huh. he was just really curious. I understood him. Yeah. Yeah. I understand if you were sensitive towards how he was really serious and everything, because mm -hmm. I'm empathic, I understand things, but yeah. I understand how he was really curious. Mm -hmm. I just I uh -huh. got a really serious vibe from him, so uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Sounds oh, like the yeah. he wanted to know about our, our emotions. Yeah, maybe they don't have emotions where he's from. Yeah, I feel like he ha he has limited emotions. Kind yeah, of. yeah, I agree, Caitlin. Uh, I got the sense also yeah. that that it's a different spectrum of emotions. Now, did you understand when I asked him that what he said? No, what did he say? Uh, he said they have three different types of emotions, and one is like very quick, and others are different. But it wasn't uh, comprehensible. He kind of translated it in a way that was it didn't have much meaning. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Uh, maybe. Translated <coughs> three types of emotions, but apparently they are quite different from ours. So he couldn't translate it into language. Yeah. He, he, he asked if we want to get rid of some of our emotion. Yes, yes, that was it. It, it was like he could teach us to do that, or I oh, didn't understand. It, 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 I don't yes. think from that too. I'm going to have to listen to that one. Yeah. It sounds like he was very strange. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So he um, expressed his his style of emotion as electromagnetic impulses. Uh, there was it was an impulse that they experienced yes. in some of their emotions, and they do not last as long as ours do. Yes. But they do come up, they intensify, and they go back as an impulse. But they don't last as long. And I asked him if he has observed. Uh, human love, the emotion of our of love. <laughs> what he said was, "Yes, 
it is very messy. <laughs> I have no idea what he meant by that, but I don't know. I think he's, he's saying that towards, um, you know how there's like really crazy things going on nowadays with love? I guess he just doesn't see our love as something really serious because you know how there's like a whole bunch of divorces and stuff and yeah maybe that's a lot of things he, happening yeah. maybe he just there's like yeah. well he was going yeah. well, it is messy all the way around so. yeah. <laughs> well he was searching for words the whole time he was here he was searching for the right words and he couldn't come up with them all the time so Messy might not have been the word he was looking for, but um, he was searching for words a lot. He was really yeah. searching for words, but Could he imagine. couldn't find them. The w it couldn't. It wasn't a direct match, so he wouldn't use it. So right, your synopsis must have been like really fire and trying yeah. to find the right words. But there was not a lot of direct matches, but <laughs> he was able to interpret enough that he could communicate. So. Once we discussed love uh, with someone, I think with Lakesh maybe, and then uh, someone came through, he didn't introduce himself, it was like that visitor, and he said, <laughs> what, what you guys can understand in love? Your love is external, meaning that you want something from someone else, and real love is complete union. Right. That's very and beautifully explained. North, he said, you know, it's, it's outside of human capacity. All right, well, I'm going to have to watch that one. That one's a great long time ago. I don't think it was published no. yet. It's still in my audio archives, but it was... <laughs> but that yeah. one I'll have to watch because I don't really... Oh, this one, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know what he said at all. Yeah, because if you think <laughs> about it, a lot of times the way we view love, it's because that person is making me feel good Mm -hmm. I want to be around them. Mm -hmm. It might sound, sound a bit detached, but a lot of times that's where what we consider love. Mm -hmm. For me it is, you know, I would have very good children from that woman. <laughs> <laughs> she has good childbearing hips. No. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, and other times. Bad, bad, bad. That was very logical. Oh, also, Max was trying to explain the concept of self-sacrifice, um, and he couldn't grasp I that concept. I just know I explained it. was a problem. What did he say about that? He said, you know, we all die. Why would you, so, you know, kill yourself? He said it doesn't make sense. And Max, we tried to give him a few examples. Max mentioned the time you sacrifice for your children. I mentioned a soldier. I think that if I'm sacrificing time for my children, Max, just as a comment to you, I'm not really sure it's sacrifice because they're my children and I love them. And I oh. think it's more sacrificial if I say I'm going to go protect somebody I don't know. You know, like you're protecting a whole nation of people you don't know, but you're willing to give your life because you believe it's the right thing to do. He was interesting I was then. Talking more about emotion. <laughs> it's causing a lot of But uh, it's, it's really what you associate very, very as yeah. what yeah, very you define different. as us it and them. Like Basically, when you expand you yourself really into your family, it's huh? one right. step, and then you expand oh. yourself into a nation. Yeah. It's got to start. I agree. It's got to start. Yeah, but, but he was. Yeah, but he was asking for emotions, and sacrifice really is not an emotion. Well, well the emotion behind doing it is is feeling kind of of service, feeling that. of that, that's, that's more like love. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Well, well I, I have to go now. It's oh. yes. Yes. yes no. Me uh, too. Gabriel, thank you for coming. Thank you, Gabriel. It was very, very thank interesting Gabriel. being. Thank you. Talk, talk that they have neutral beings and they can choose to be male or female or neutral, not male or female. And oh. I, what I understand is most of them are neutral. Well, not I male or female. connected to a computer. Wow. Biological computer. No, it's a lot more interesting than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I the matrix. Of any of that. <laughs> it's like fields of people growing in a in a field. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. 
<laughs> like the Borg? No, that, that's humans at all. Not even looking human. Okay. No, he was happy he didn't look like a human. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez, okay, good. <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm glad I don't look like you guys. <laughs> I wanted to also comment on, on uh, uh, another addition. We have, like, explained the uh, implants. So Jim and I were given some implants when we started talking to this dude. They were considering, uh, first, the channeling of Jim wasn't easy at the beginning. So they tuned him up by you know sticking implants here and there and some of them were good and some of that hurt. So they don't oh. they would take it out. Or, you know. The one in the throat that they put in was real bad. Um, they took that out within a few days, but all of a sudden I was like <laughs> and they wow. said, that will help you channel better. He, oh I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no. So that was in the But beginning. how did you know that they had put an implant there? Because we asked them, yeah. He, oh. he talks to them all the time, right? Yeah, so. <laughs> and I was going, oh, this is not good. <laughs> this really well, hurts. How many, huh? how, how many implants do you have then? Huh? How many implants do you have now then? I don't even know. You don't know. I didn't oh. ask recently. Yeah, same for oh. me. <laughs> One of the implants also hurt and uh, they took it out. And I. Oh. I you know, I didn't ask to take it out. I think if I waited a little longer, it would kind of settle. So, um, but you know, they they quick. You well, know, you had so. one in your side. Uh, you think so? Remember the one that was over here that made a mark? Oh no, it's not an implant. They okay. did a test on uh, you know my compatibility with whatever astral visits. Oh, but it, they so took it out then or something. No, it wasn't an implant. It was kind of a test. It, you know, the only proof I had for a long time, and still I think that the main proof I had. You know, geometric marks on my body, they appeared and stayed there for almost half a year. Wow. Uh -huh. wow. Do you have an idea of what the implants look like? Uh, look like? They're yeah. very, very small, for one thing. They look biological. It's like, you know, a little clump of biological tissue. Right, and they are they have removed implants from people all around. Yeah. So they are there, so. If you just Google, go to Google Images and then look for... Yeah. That uh, you'll see it. It's very small. It's very very small. Yeah. yeah. Richard Dolan told told the story how you know from from a witness how somebody tried to remove the implant and he saw that the implant tried to escape. You know. He okay. Yeah. Moved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that interview. I heard that interview on Coast to Coast when he was explaining that. Yeah. 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 I think. So, uh, I think it was Whitley Strieber that they tried to take his out and it moved and it went further in so they couldn't do it. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm also going to go and... Uh, I think we're done, yeah. Yes. yes. I'm toast. Yeah, we, uh, I invite everybody, so uh, I invite everybody to register the <laughs> Federation, the Galactic, yeah. what, what is that site? Yes. Federation of Light. The Federation of Light at dot ning dot com. So uh, they are welcoming us. They like us, and let's copy our activity there. And um, and uh, that will bring more people. We kind of be more exposed. And so. the, what's the other network? The Enlightenment. Oh, there are several, but let's start with one. The Federation of Light ning dot com, uh, and it's posted. Uh, it's posted on our site. Please join there and be active there, and let's go out. I mean, we were cooking in a in a jar, protected from others, and <laughs> invisible to others for half a year. Now it's time to spill over to a bigger world. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jim. Thank you so thank much, you. as always. Max, oh, thank you very welcome. much. Always. Thanks, 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 everybody. Thanks. See you Bye. Bye. And take Bye. care, everybody. Have a great Thank night. Thank you, Jaguar and, and Gabrielle and Sabrina and J J uh, Kathleen and everybody. Hey. God bless you. <laughs> Max. Bye. Max. Max. This is, is it, really interesting. Yes. Max, is it possible to stop recording and still keep the hangout for a yes. bit? Yes, can do stop. Uh, I, all right, goodbye, the viewers, and stop the broadcast.